They were a jury, sequestered, but far from 12 angry men and women. They were passionate and at times partisan, culling more than 60 nominated buildings down to 10. Any other comments about that? I think they that's... came from all different backgrounds, not just architects or uh, aesthetically oriented individuals. We had some real estate related folks uh, uh, and other historians as well. So that was a good experience to hear all the different opinions and dialogues. And everybody would weigh in. Some people had personal connections to it. Uh, involvement. Some people just knew the history really well. Other people really knew the impact, the economic impact of the building over time. And then we kind of compared all those notes and then started to rank them. The final 10 is as diverse as those who nominated and selected them. The U.S. Marine Hospital, most Louisvillians are familiar with it, uh, traveling east to west towards New Albany. It's there in the Portland uh, district, uh, designed by uh, Robert Mills back in 1845. But uh, Mills also is most famous for designing the uh, Washington Monument. It's a national historic landmark. It was a Save America's Treasures project, and, and uh, it was one of the 11 most endangered places in America. And uh, fortunately, this community responded, and we were able to restore the exterior back to its glory, uh, put on a new roof, took 23 layers of paint off the building. The water tower, what an elegant solution to a practical uh, uh, need. It, uh, it's, it's yet another one of those great uh, Greek Revival uh, buildings in America. When boats were coming down the river to land at Louisville, in, in the, right before the Civil War, and there were 3,000 boats a year landing in Louisville at that time, it was like a, it, it was an announcement of what was to come. This served as our gateway arch to the city. It was their first impression of the city and said, hey, this is a great place in which to live. We have quality technology and water here. So that was established back in 1860 and has served as a landmark ever since. It's the longest serving a municipal airport still in existence, I believe, here in the country. I can't imagine a better Art Deco style building. Uh, but Aerosmith, uh, fascinating man, his company's still very, very active here in Louisville. There is nothing like that in the city of that, that deco feel and, and the scale. Again, it's, it's not overwhelming, it's not soaring glass panels, but it's just, it, it's just a great, great space. It's two parts. It's the almost overstatement to the outside with the lights over emphasizing various architectural aspects of the building. And then it's the invitation inside to the um, old men's department store interior. And then the lights on the outside. There, there's a, a local Louisville tradition. If somebody's had a little too much to drink, they, they would be said to be lit up like Levy's. And, uh, and, and the fact that they were able to preserve that building and convert it into, you know, what I think a very, very popular restaurant. In both of its careers, a very important building, as the bank uh, in the 1830s, and then its conversion so many years later into, you know, the, one of the most uh, interesting acting companies in America. Hard to imagine a more elegant space to go watch a performance. I mean, and just walking into the lobby does to you today what I think the, the architect intended it to do, you know, overwhelm you. So we are very fortunate that this building was not destroyed. Most of the buildings in its immediate vicinity, about 95% of the buildings around it have been demolished over time. But Actors Theater has remained and we are so glad that it's been adapted to the theater use. Uh, the, the curvilinear, the fluid design of it reflects the dancers on the interior. Uh, we have that large uh, window opening uh, that you can actually view in as the, the, the dancers prepare. Uh, and it's one of the, uh, it helped establish that East Market, East Main District as a artistic community. It could have been a, just a closed box, it would have been much cheaper but it has, a, it, it has a flair to it that sort of reflects what it is supposed to do, I think, that it's, it's about dance and performance and, and showing off a bit. 
designed by the famed architect Mies van der Rohe. Mies van der Rohe uh, did the Seagram's office building in New York City, which is, was one of the great office structures. Uh, but we are so fortunate to have one of his structures here uh, that is the, the keystone entrance into the Belvedere. It's an airy building. It's, uh, it almost feels like a see-through building. And so it belongs outdoors. It's an indoor outdoors. It's a very simplistic, minimalist building, but uh, on a world stage, it brings that quality to Louisville, international fame, and so somewhat sets us apart. Michael Graves, it's his crowning achievement as an architect in my estimation. A phenomenal building. One of those buildings with grand ambitions that uh, succeeded. The color uh, and the imagination and the quality of the workmanship and the quality of the materials and just the boldness of it. It, it really does enliven down. It, it, it is a pivotal spot for downtown Louisville. It was one of the grand hotels, not only of Louisville, but of America, uh, built by, uh, designed by Frank Andrews and uh, William Dodd. Uh, Frank Andrews designed the uh, Frankfurt Capitol building. Magnificent lobby, but just an ornate Beaux-Arts design structure that is, uh, again, a world-class structure for, for the city. I don't think there's another building in Louisville that tells the story, the history of Louisville better than the Seelbach. Now we're establishing new stories about Louisville. I hear many times when people come into downtown Louisville, they want to stay at 21C because they want to experience it. So the impact on Louisville, you know, is tremendous um, because of that creativity and the blending of art and, and commerce in such a great way that it, people want it to be replicated elsewhere and it started here in Louisville. The 10 buildings that changed Louisville are receptacles of our history, our aspirations, our stories. One of the richnesses of community life is story. And you can walk down a street if you've got something to tell and an old building allows for the telling of a story, what used to be. It allows for pointing out and so it attracts. It's a, um, it's a quality of life issue because it becomes the basis for community enrichment through the telling of story.